Hello Reading Warriors and welcome back to my channel and welcome to a Christmassy themed video. I am super excited to do this video. I first saw Beth over at Books Nest do this video so I very much encourage you to check out her original video. I will be using mostly the same prompts that she did. It's not a tag or a challenge or anything like that. I just thought that this was such a fun creative video and I wanted to do it. I did have to change some prompts around because it is very much based off of her Christmas tree decorations and my Christmas tree has some different decorations so I was able to keep some of the prompts but for different decorations but for one or two of them I did have to change them around completely. So the first prompt that she has on her tree which also fits on my tree very well is a red bulb. So well, this is our red bulb. A common book on people's shelves with a red cover. And so I'm going to be keeping that prompt and the thing is is that I have books with red on the cover but not like a lot of red on the cover and especially not ones that are like super popular so the book that I chose doesn't have that much red but it's still a red cover and I still think a lot of people have it on their shelves it's very common and that would be Scythe by Neil Schusterman you can see the bits of red on it um, a lot of people I think have this at least the trilogy um, or at least Scythe, if not the entire trilogy, or at least have read Scythe, um, just because it was such a big popular book when it came out a few years ago. I know I have it, and I haven't read The Toll yet, but I really, I've been meaning to. I will get there eventually. It's just so big and scary. So the second prompt, Beth has a little mouse decoration on her Christmas tree. While we don't have any mice on our tree, I thought of something different that would kind of replace it, but still work for the same prompt that she did. And so, my family Christmas tree, the one that is behind me, because I am back at my parents' house, it's full of very unique and very personalized ornaments, as every year my mom gets us ornaments that represent some event or something that happened in the past year of our life. So if we joined a sport, started learning a musical instrument, if we were in musical theater, in a play, or, you know, anything like that, then you're going to find a representation of it on our tree. And so I think that just really any of the life-based ornaments on our tree works for the prompt that Beth chose with her little mouse, and that was contemporary. On my first year of going to school when I was in preschool. And then I got this one for my high school graduation. So for the book I have chosen for that, I chose We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, and I talked about this book in my last video. I chose this one because it is one of the first contemporary novels that I read, and I still don't understand because it's got this element of mystery to it it's this girl and her group of friends go like her family goes on vacation and so something happened a few years back on that vacation and she is trying to unravel years later what exactly happened and why her and her friends are always lying about it so it was one of the first contemporaries that i read and it's very life-based so life-based ornaments or contemporary. Makes sense, right? This is our non-edible red candy cane that we hang on the tree. Normally we have many more, but just this one for us this year. The next one is a candy cane, and now we do have candy canes on our tree. We used to have more in the past, but we do have like one or two of them on our tree this year, and the prompt for that one is a reliable book. You know, like a book that you know is going to be straightforward until there's that little part in the end. It's got that little curve at the top, but everyone knows a candy cane. Everyone likes the idea of a candy cane, even if you don't actually like the taste of a candy cane. Uh, so this is just a good, reliable book with a little bit of a curve at the end, which I thought was such an interesting prompt idea. And for that one, I chose The Miner's Lady by Tracy Peterson. I read this last January, and it's just a very, like, reliable like, it is a forbidden love romance where you've got a family feud between two families in old, old America. And, of course, a girl from one family and a boy from the other family fall in love. And, oh, that's not okay because the family is feuding. It's a good, reliable Romeo and Juliet retelling in the old Americas. And so, I thought it was a very candy cane. Like, you, you know what's going to happen. You understand what's going to go. But, you know, the ending is slightly different than the rest of the book. But, like, that's okay. The next prompt that she had done, and that I am also going to keep because we both have these on our tree, are these big bulbs with the really pretty design around them. So different from the red ones because the red ones are just a plain color, but these have a really pretty design and these are some of my favorite ornaments to hang on the tree every year. 
This one is my favorite. I got it from my mom while I was living abroad. And this one is also a very pretty one that we hang on the tree. So the prompt for that one is uh, a pretty big book, you know, very representation of the ornament. And so the book I chose was my copy of the Grimm's Fairy Tales because this thing is a chunky book. But it's absolutely gorgeous on the inside and the outside. I love the outside because it has like the woods that are so commonly used in these fairy tales. Um, and it's full of like short stories, obviously, because it's the fairy tales. So it's like not that hard to read, just like the ornaments are not that hard to look at because they're just beautiful. So beautiful. The next one she talked about, she has a couple of different mushrooms on her tree. And I have actually never heard of putting mushrooms on a tree before. Um, but I thought that was such an interesting idea, but I found that what we hang on our tree here, when I think a lot of other people have hung on their tree, that have different variations to it, just like Beth's mushrooms, would be snowflakes. I feel like there are a lot of, there are quite a few different snowflakes on our tree, and I'm sure there are some variation of snowflakes on other people's trees, because winter, snow, it snows here in Michigan, so we're, why not have a snowflake on our tree to represent that? These are a couple of the snowflakes that we have on our tree. The first one's from school, the second one is just pretty. And so the recommendation based off of the snowflakes are a lot of YA books that readers have some variation of, and for this I chose two different book series, one of them being a throwback for those readers who have been reading for a long time. I feel like this is on their shelves, and one is a little bit more recent in the past few years as it was so big, and I just... I always see, I saw so many people reading it when it came out. So the first one, the little older one, is the Mortal Instruments series. I don't actually own these books myself, but I have read them, and I think so many YA readers have at least read them, owned them for at least some chunk of time in their life. So I feel like it's a pretty safe one. And then the most recent one is one that I have talked about so much in so many of my videos, so I won't spend too much time on it, and that's the... Airfolk Trilogy by Holly Black, The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, and The Queen of Nothing. And yeah, every book was huge when it came out right from the start. And I've seen so many people talk about it that it's like, I'm sure people have read at least the first one, if not own all three books. For sure. That's just, that's just how it is, I'm sure. I'm positive. Now this next one are these cute little red birds that she has on her tree and my family normally puts up on our tree. This year we only have one on there. We were trying not to overload the Christmas tree, but in recent, in past years we have put quite a few red birds. We don't hang them, they kind of just twist onto the tree so they look like they're perched on top of the tree rather than hanging from it like other regular ornaments. And so the prompt for this one is a book that is eye-catching on your shelf because with these little birds we're always trying to find them on our tree and I 100% agree with that because we always put our birds a little deeper into the tree like not right out on the edge because we don't want them to fall off so it's always so much fun to see how many birds you can find every day um, that was always something I liked to do as a young child this is the only bird we have on the tree currently this year normally we would have more so they always tend to be one of the one of the ornaments that my eyes try to specifically look for and so what's a book on your shelf that you always try to specifically look for or always stands out to you and for me this is the school of the soman chanani and this book always catches my eye because of the color scheme and how busy it is but also like it's not overly busy i love the blue and the purple it's a really big book i don't have the rest of the series yet of course classic classic laura don't have the series, but I do like it a lot. I love the imagery of the swans. I love the colors and the castles and it's just, it's an eye-catching book that I always find myself looking for on my shelf, even though it is quite a bit of an older book and I read it forever ago. I still love it there. The next decoration that Beth had was a bee and we don't have any bees on our trees. So I decided to go with some of the children's toys on our tree because as I said earlier, so many ornaments are based off of moments in our life. When me and my siblings were younger, it was mostly based off of toys and things we liked to play with or look at as young children. And so I've decided that for that one, I completely changed the prompt for that one. Initially, Beth's was a B that represents a series that doesn't match on your shelf. And while I think that is a great prompt, I just don't have anything similar to it. So I decided to go with children's toys and just 
to recommend a great middle grade. This is actually my older brother's little choo-choo train from when he was really young. He loved playing with trains. My favorite middle grade, I believe to this day, still is the Septimus Heap series. The first book is called Magic, spelled weirdly, and that's one thing that drew me to it as a middle grade reader when I was very young. Um, and this is by Angie Sage. I own the first, second, and I believe last book of the series on my Kindle, even though it's like a seven book long series. I love the magic system in this. I love the characters in this. I love the imagery. The books have little illustrations in them uh, along the chapters, and so those were a lot of fun. So if you like to read middle grade and you have never heard of Septimus Heap, please read it. It's definitely a seventh son of the seventh son type thing, but it's not solely about the seventh son of the seventh son. Like there are other characters that are major and have other life events happening that are crucial to the story. And then the last prompt on here, I am keeping the same as Beth because she is so right. A nutcracker is definitely a must have decoration around Christmas time. While we don't have any nutcrackers on our trees, we do have them next to our tree, kind of right in front of the fireplace a little bit. Uh, this is my mom's collection. She has quite a few of them. I have one because every year it was a tradition for us to go to the nutcracker, the ballet, because we quite enjoy the ballet. And for years, my mom, my aunt, and even my cousin would buy a nutcracker every year. I did not start partaking this tradition until last year where I bought my first nutcracker and I was so excited to like start my own collection. I was like, I moved out now. I need to have my own nutcracker collection for my own place. And then this year, you know, quarantine and pandemic and all that kind of made the nutcracker not happening. So I'm very sad I won't be buying a nutcracker this year. But, you know. See, this is my mom's collection of nutcrackers, and she has quite a few. Um, she hasn't gotten a nutcracker every time we've gone to the ballet, but for the past six years she has, and these are those nutcrackers. Pretty sad compared to my one and only nutcracker. This is the nutcracker that I got last year at the ballet, and I'm very proud of him, and hopefully he won't be lonely for long. At least I have one and I'm back at my mom's house and she has quite a few. And so the prompt for this one is a classic because nutcrackers are so classic. The ballet is classic, like everything about them, classic. So the book I chose to recommend for this one is, I actually have two books for this one. One I think a lot of people have read, if you haven't, please read it. And the other one I haven't really heard people talk about, so that's why I'm recommending it. The first one is Little Women, and I believe a lot of people have read it, and then when the movie came out, I believe a lot of people either reread it or read it for the first time, but if you haven't read it, seriously, please read Little Women. It is such a good book about these four sisters who are all very different from each other, each other living in like old Victorian times, and them dealing with, you know, having the life that women did, but also having their very strong personalities that they have, and it's, oh, it's so much fun. So, I have not yet seen the movie, but I really want to because I adore Emma Watson 100%. But, the book first. The book is very good. And it's obviously by Louisa May Alcott. Then the second classic book that I want to recommend is Around the World in 80 Days. This is a Jules Verne book, and I read this in middle school. It was like one of the first classics that I read in middle school, and I liked it. It's literally the book that I read and liked enough to keep reading classics to keep going to, uh, we had a classics club in middle school where we just talked about them, so like, yes, I enjoy them, and I really enjoyed Around the World in 80 Days. I thought it was so much fun. And because the Nutcracker is so big around the world, like the ballet is such a big thing, I thought it was very fitting for the idea of the Nutcracker. Yeah, those are all the recommendations based off of Christmas tree decorations. Seriously, I urge you once again, please go and check out uh, Beth's video out over at her channel, Books Nest, because her video was just absolutely beautiful, and she has like her Christmas tree, and then she's got like a fire on her TV in the background. It's just such a cozy time, and I would definitely just recommending checking out her channel anyway, because, oh, I absolutely adore her videos. So feel free to comment down below any books that you have that you think a lot of other people have or that fit the prompts, or if you have any unique or really fun ornaments on your trees if you do decorate Christmas trees, either for Christmas or New Year's. I know a lot of people will decorate trees 
much like we do for Christmas, but more so for New Year's. So if you have any fun decorations for those, please let me know down below. And also recommend a book to go along with them because it's so much fun. Um, otherwise, give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. I release videos every Thursday. However, yeah, this video is not going up on a Thursday. It's an extra bonus video. Woohoo! Um, but stick around for every video on Thursday that I will release. And with that, I am going to wish you guys a happy reading.